Do we really need carbon plate running shoes? Hey cats, Ed running shoe, Budzinski here. Thanks for tuning into the channel, it's very much appreciated. Today I'm gonna to try and answer that burning question. Do we really need carbon plate running shoes? Are they a fad? Have they come about for a reason? And are they here to stay? Over the last couple of years, it's been the word on every shoe tuber's lips. Carbon plates, super fast, squashy, compressive, responsive, pop on toe off. Just saying I'm growing a bit tired and fatigued of all the talk of these cookie cutter running shoes that are coming out. Everybody's inserting a carbon plate into their top squashy foam. Every manufacturer's at it, aren't they? We got one from Asics recently out of Magic Speed. Wasn't that called the Meta Racer last year? It seems awfully similar. Johnny Cash there, played by Joaquin Phoenix. He's auditioning for a song in front of Sam Phillips with his band, and he just stops him mid-flow due to the song just being this tired, same old tune, sang in just the same way that everybody else sings it. A whole host of new carbon plate running shoes are incoming for 2021, and they're even more expensive than the ones from 2020. Most of them, at least, I suppose. You've got the New Balance Fuel Cell RC Elite 2, even more foam in that one. The Asics Metaspeed Sky, if you can actually buy it anywhere. Another 200 plus Earth Credits Brooks Hyperion shoe. I wonder if that one will be better than the Hyperion 1 and the 2. All of them though have got new, better, more forgiving foam. Higher marketing budgets and of course stock will be very scarce to ramp up the demand. Training in a variety of non-carbon plate shoes recently, it did make me think back to 2017 when the Vaporfly first appeared. I mean, was the carbon plate put into that shoe to create a bit more stability? Perhaps a little more structure underfoot? Perhaps people found it too squashy, that Zoom X phone. Maybe that was the reason, rather than trying to provide some sort of propulsive sensation. I started digging into carbon plate shoes a little bit. Not literally, just into history. So even back in the early noughties, Adidas were experimenting with carbon plate technologies. It was mainly there to help running economy. Those plates were an awful lot flatter though with less curve from the midfoot to the forefoot area. They found that those produced less toe bend, but more energy was expelled in the ankle. Anything more than a moderate curve seemed to counteract the amount of energy that you saved on toe off. So certainly they found they could improve economy but is it really that much to make a difference? Especially for everyday runners. A lot of people seem to suggest that the carbon plates there is a bit of a spring, but that clearly isn't the intention in this iteration or implementation. Another survey was produced by Nike this time. So yeah, shoe manufacturer, you can take this one as an advert, suggested that runners using the Vaporfly 4% experienced less muscle soreness than if they use the daily Pegasus model. I think that's a given really. We all know that Zoom X has those forgiving compressive qualities. And of course it's a darn sight lighter, isn't it? But I get loads of people commenting on the channel that they've bought some of these super shoes and actually kind of works against them almost. They find no real benefit and actually in some cases it's caused repeat injuries or strange issues to sort of come about that they've never experienced. Pains appearing at the top of the foot around certain distances. Others are too scared to use the shoes aside from racing due to concerns about durability. They're worried that the foam or the outsole is just going to disintegrate and their expensive purchase is going to be useless. Another study that I found really interesting suggested that the use of these shoes amongst heel strikers might actually be most effective. They might get most benefit from the foam and plate combination. And yet in direct comparison to this, another survey suggested that it was all down to minimizing ground contact. They found that actually runners who utilized the shoe had the least amount of ground contact. So yeah, that kind of counters out the other survey a little bit. All those studies surrounded the Vaporfly 4% and Next% percent shoes. So what about other manufacturers? Is there any information on those? An American athlete attempted some test runs in Socony's Endorphin Pro shoe. They found a 2% increase in their running efficiency, despite the shoe having a slightly firmer and denser midsole material. Sadly, the same athlete did pick up an injury a little further down the line and decided not to pursue use of that shoe. Some studies have suggested that these carbon plate shoes can shift, perhaps, strain and stress to other parts of the body. Well, when I say other parts of the body, I mean to different parts of your legs. 
it's almost like a slopey shoulder syndrome where you're moving the strain and stress of the running to another area and sometimes that area just isn't strong enough. How many times have you heard of people complaining about really sore upper thighs and the tops of their legs, hips? Loads of people complain about hip problems when they've used these shoes. So are some of these other companies just simply copying the successful implementation of that carbon plate in the Zoom X p -Bax phone? It's a winning formula, isn't it? Everybody wants to get in on it, but as proven, some of them just aren't anywhere near as good. Are they just adding more and more foam to try and resemble Nike's Alpha Fly shoe? I mean, I don't think anybody can suggest that one's been particularly successful so far. Do you believe that like a higher stack height and more squashy foam is going to actually benefit you in the long run? No pun intended. I mean, look at the New Balance Fuel Cell Rebel 2. I mean, that's a great shoe, really compressive foam. It does feel very like some of Nike's offerings, but no carbon plate there, just not really needed. But would you want to run a marathon out? Don't know. Probably be fine. Nike don't seem to be particularly bothered though, do they, about these other manufacturers' attempts to outdo them. I mean, they only changed the upper on the next percent too, didn't they? The midsole and outsole, you know practically the same. It still seems to be the first choice of the carbon plate shoes. I do find some of the marathon shoe review quotes quite interesting. Going up to 15, 18, 20 miles or something, you'll get a fair feel for how a shoe's going to perform, but I think it's down to the runner really around that period, around that distance. I think if a shoe's worked for you up to sort of 10, 15 miles, then it's probably going to work for you after that. If you're strong enough, you're good enough, gonna do it. I always try and keep my comments within the boundaries of things I've tested. That's all I can do really. What distances and paces have I achieved and experienced in the shoe? When I do see comments though about people using these shoes as daily trainers, I'm not entirely sure it's something that I would want to do. You're completely denying certain parts of your foot the opportunity to gain strength, aren't you, if you're just going to use them all the time. I found certainly running in some heavier shoes actually seems to be beneficial during training. When you put something lighter on you, feels if you're flying. I mean, when you look at the difference between something like the Liberate Nitro from Puma and then that Deviate Nitro Elite, I mean, they seem to share the same upper, don't they? There's a plate in there, some additional rubber, and you're paying 80 euros more. It does make you wonder. I think you can all make your own minds up on that one. Are the manufacturing processes a little bit different? I wouldn't like to say. I mean, that shoe's around about 173 Earth credits which puts it in Adi Zero Adios Pro sort of territory, doesn't it? I think it makes the Adidas shoe seem like really good value. Something a little bit different, that shoe. Seems to work for Kafuzi as well. That was a great time in the half marathon time trial the other day. Makes me wonder how much the RC Elite 2 will be when it gets here, over here to the UK. Can imagine it being quite pricey. Is it worth it? I don't know, I think that's in the eye of the beholder. After testing out lots of these carbon plate shoes, I would suggest that I think it's probably the foam and plate combination, like a cumulative effect. I would suggest though, if you're gonna get a pair, please put them to use in training first to get a feel of it. Do some pace work in it, a longer run. I mean, you wouldn't wear new socks for a race, would you? That you'd never tried out before, so why would you wear new shoes? It's so subjective. Shoes are so subjective. I just try and give you my honest view about what I've experienced in them. It's all I can do. It does seem sometimes like it's just designed to sell products and some of them just aren't that great. It's the whole yay or nay thing. I try and focus in on things I think will work for me and then tell you what I think of them. You know, if it's a brick, I'll tell you it's a brick. Let me know your thoughts and opinions on this very hot topic of discussion down in the comments. Musical interlude time. I've really enjoyed the music of Tanawian for a long time. I think I picked up an album by them back in, I think it was 2007. I seem to have missed their last one, which is out in 2019. I'm going to attempt to pronounce the name of it. I may get it wrong. I'm sorry if I have. Ahmad Jar. There's a few guest sort of vocalists on here. I think they've had some other people come in and do some production with them as well. But you'll expect the very familiar sound of Tanawian here. Really chilled and relaxed drums and percussion and those almost trance-like sort of guitar motifs. Always really crystal clear sort of guitar sounds as well. There's such an incredible atmosphere to, to Narwin tracks. Almost places you right there. I found them really great for running as well. You can really focus in on your form. 
I'd love to know what some of the tracks are about. If anybody does know, can you let me know in the comments? So do go and check them out. Fantastic band from Mali to Nawi. Thanks for tuning in today, guys, and sticking with me till the very end. I do appreciate it. If you haven't done so already, please hit that subscribe button and click the bell below for notifications when we launch those new videos. And it does help the channel out a huge amount if you give this video a thumbs up, like, and share it with your running buddies. My name's Ed Bud, and I'll be seeing you.